Okay, first, I have to say this. I'm not teaching the sutra, not this sutra, not any sutras. This is because the words of the Buddha cannot be taught or explained by a deluded being like me. Only those who have reached first Bhumi can really understand what Buddha taught in the sutras. Anyway, this is what Chandrakirti said. Um, I'm only attempting to create some sort of a curiosity, mainly, you know, for myself and hopefully for others also, so that people can have some sort of a interest curiosity or you know, appetite for Buddha Dharma in general, and especially the sutras. And I'm doing this, even this attempt, I do this, of course, um, entirely relying on uh, teachings I have received from my masters, and the commentaries that are written by great commentators of the Buddha's Sutra. Nagarjuna, Asanga, and so many in India, and also great many commentators later in Tibet. Um, Buddha taught so many ways and um, like infinite ways actually. 84,000 is um, just uh, almost like, um, for the sake of diluted being like us, we need to some sort, of, we need to have some sort of a reference. So, the idea of 84,000 is there, but in fact, Buddha taught much, much more than 84,000. But for people like us to understand uh, Buddha's teachings, I think it is important, first of all, to know that teaching of the Buddha, when we say the teachings, we are not only talking about uh, teachings in the context of, you know, like um, verbal teachings, uh, things that you can hear, listen, read. Buddha taught in so many ways. In fact, many times he uh, did not answer questions. For instance, he did not respond to you know, inquiries. Even that is considered a teaching. A very famous one, for instance, right after the enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, the first thing Buddha said was, I have found a truth that is profound, brilliant, uncompounded, 
luminous, and so on. But nobody is going to hear this. Nobody has the ability to hear this. Therefore, I'm going to remain in the forest. Um, without uttering any words. In fact, that is already a teaching. In fact, that is one of the most important teaching because there he's saying the truth cannot be verbalized. Truth cannot be conceptualized. But um, then as requested by many of his disciples, such as Indra, Brahma, Shiva, and um, Kali, and also subsequently the great, you know, bhikshus and bhikshunis, such as Shariputra, Kashyapa. And then of course, the great Bodhisattva and Mahasattva like Abhalokiteshvara and um, Manjushiri, uh, they requested many teachings. Um, uh, they requested teachings for the benefit of sentient beings. So out of compassion, according to the different capacities of the different people, uh, different beings, he taught many, many ways. And for instance, uh, yeah, according, uh, according to the different capacities, different faculties, different, I don't know, the background, so on and so forth. And sometimes I would say even urgency, let's say. For instance, sonam main tango do. We say this. In order for um, sentient beings to rescue from committing non virtuous actions and thoughts, in order for the sentient beings to divert non virtuous thoughts and actions, he taught many teachings. And this is almost like for, you know, like temporary, temporal teachings, you know, like. Because the first thing what you have to do is rescue people from really uh, unsafe zone to the safer zone. Then there's a, a big group of teachings where Buddha really concentrated on diverting the cause, the root cause that causes the experience of samsara. So there is a, so many teachings on that. And then finally he taught a many, many group, of, uh, you know, many uh, myriad of teachings that concentrate on diverting all kinds of view we say all view, any kind of view, samsara, nirvana, good view, bad view, all kinds of view to divert all view. He taught so many teachings. For a very untrained and very you know, like light-hearted people like us, sometimes when we read or when we listen to many of these Buddha's teachings, they may even appear contradictory. But actually, they are not a contradiction. All of them are directly or indirectly, one way or another, to lead ignorant beings to see the final truth.
Um, now, to celebrate um, Club of Duchen, the very special um, day, and also to really celebrate um, 84,000's um, you know, ongoing endeavor to translate the words of the Buddha. And um, especially um, um, you know, to celebrate the translation of this particular sutra. Today, I'm going to just, um, I don't know, maybe the best I can do is sort of very vaguely introduce this sutra for those who are unfamiliar with. So, um, Avatam, Avatamsaka Sutra, Avatamsaka Sutra is a really, really big sutra. I think it comes sometimes in, you know, depending on what edition we are talking, four volumes and like really big. And um, this Gandhav Yuha Sutra, uh, sutra this is actually the climax, sort of the last chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. And um, How should I how should I even articulate this? You know, in our mundane world, sometimes we use words like we use terms like infinite. What do we mean by that? We just sort of casually say these things, isn't it? Infinite. It's infinite. Or it's speechless. Sometimes we even very crudely say it's mind boggling. Unfathomable, inexpressible, beyond concept. I think probably for, for the <clears throat> newcomers, I think <clears throat> the term infinite may be is good to think about. Think about this. What do we mean by infinite? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, it's kind of important, isn't it? The, you know, the idea of infinite is equally important with the idea of one, two, three, four, five. If infinite is abstract and arbitrary, then one, two, three, four, five is also abstract and in, you know, arbitrary, it's useless. So infinite has to be important, but usually we don't think about, we just say it infinite. Now, do you want to know about infinite? This is it. Avatamska Sutra is really that teaches that really, I don't know, teach is maybe not the right word. It really describes, because to, to articulate, inex, to, to express the inexpressible, to express the infinite is difficult. You need the whole setting and the settings are just, you know, beyond our comprehension. 
And I'll try to sort of jump here and there try just to give you an idea. If you are reading the Abhatamsaka Sutra right from the beginning, probably about 100 page or so on is a list of names of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas and the listeners during that teaching. And then if you pay some attention to these people who are there, you know, like, like in our mind right now, and by the way, before, before this, I should tell you this, you know, historically speaking, Bud Buddha Dharma came from India. So you can say this sutra came from India. And remember, India is the one, the one country that gave us zero idea, zero. What an idea. I mean, what is zero? Shunya, they even call it Shunya, zero. What, what is it? And yet we need zero so much, so much. Without the zero, how are business people going to make business? Without the zero, there is no base for in, uh, what, mathematics. Without the zero, all algorithm, computer science, never going to work. India gave us zero, and India gave us Avatamsaka Sutra, and India is giving us Gandhav Yuha Sutra. If you guys can appreciate zero, you should appreciate infinite. Because if you, you know, you can't, you know, sort of choose to just, oh yeah, I like to have the zero, but I don't, or the infinite bit is too abstract. You can't do that. But that's what human beings do. But anyway, I, I just want to, you know, somehow this came in my, my head. So just want, <clears throat> wanted to tell you this, <clears throat> but, Avatamsaka, again, going back to that. Okay, even, okay. You know, Avatamsaka Sutra is obviously Mahayana Sutra. This word Maha is very deceiving because I think Maha is, Maha always gets interpreted as big. Because in India, there's even a Maha Cola, you know, small Coca Cola and a big, big Coca Cola. They call it Maha Cola. But in the, in the context of the Mahayana, this Maha is actually, we are talking about infinite. We are not talking about big. Big is not infinite, big is finite, you know, infinite. The reason why I am stressing infinite is because Mahayana's view is infinite. Some of you probably have injured, I mean, um, struggled reading my book, which, I've read, uh, which I have written a few years ago, 10, 10, 15 years ago, I think, called, um, uh, what makes you not a Buddhist? In it, I sort of really strongly said that, well, all compounded things are impermanent, all emotions are pain, nothing has any, uh, you know, truly existing in nature, uh, nirvana is beyond concept. And I have sort of really, uh, I've really said that if one of them is missing, then you are not a Buddhist. You have to have four of that. Now, wait a minute, hear this out. Buddha said, Buddha asked a monk, if you are looking at a pile of garbage and then pointing at this garbage and say, oh, that's a pile of jewel. Is this true or not? Is this right or wrong? Then of course the monk says, of course it's wrong. Buddha said, yes. Just like that, if you are pointing at 
this four C, all compound, th all compound things are impermanent, so on and so forth, this four C, you know, pile of this four, if you are looking at this and say, this is Mahayana, it's exactly the same as looking at a pile of garbage and think and say that this is a jewel. See, this is how Maha, you know, when you say four seal are Mahayana, that's finite, finite, you know, like not infinite. That's like this zone box. Actually, you go beyond that box also. So if you guys really want to explore Mahayana Sutra, such as Avatamsaka Sutra, you really, really have to appreciate and appreciate the infinite quality. And you really should try to have some sort of a open-minded, I'm really asking for open-mindedness here. And when, <clears throat> when the organizers asked me to uh, do this, I've been thinking about it past few days. Actually, I read the whole sutra, the, I mean, not the Abhatamska, that's like so long. Gandhav Yuha Sutra, that's like 800 pages, the last, last one also. It's, and um, I was telling the organizer that I, I, I will only do it as a someone who is sort of, who thinks, devoted to the Buddha and his teachings. It's impossible for me to even decipher this path in a very academic and scientific in this way, because the moment you do that, then you will lose it. You really have to appreciate this. And for many of you, it's almost like sounding, I'm demanding you to have some sort of a blind faith. It's actually not. I'm, I'm not asking you to have a blind devotion. I'm asking you, actually, if you believe things are only one, two, three, four, five, six, that's blind devotion. If you are stuck with that, that is blind. If you think shapes are always square, triangle, what circle, semicircle, that's that's stuck. It's called stuck, blind, fixated. You have to really think big. So if you're reading Sutra, Avatamsaka Sutra, you will notice even at the audience. A long time ago, you know, the Steve, you know, Professor Stephen Goodman, who's a really good friend of mine, we talked about this, about Tamsaka Sutra. And at that time, we just watched Star Wars. I don't know, it was the fourth episode or something. And after the movie, we, we went out for a coffee and the, Stephen Goodman <clears throat> said, you know, Abhatamsaka Sutra is like a billion times more than, you know, Star Wars. I didn't know what he was talking, but it, you know, I mean, in our small mind, I can really appreciate how, why he said this. Because if you, are, if you are reading some of the Buddhas, some of the audience during the Abhatamsaka teaching, you know, you will think, oh, Buddha is teaching. So all the disciples are all this usual bunch of human beings. No, they were ghosts, gods, demigods, asuras, gandharvas. And I bet many of them had two heads. I bet many of them have a mouth on their stomach. I bet some of them look like a dewdrop. I bet many of them look like a mist. 
But you know, as I, I, I told you earlier, if you can't, if you think, oh, okay, so this is a Buddhist fairy tales, then I'm sorry, this sutra is not for you. Did Alice in the Wonderland and stuff like that and be happy with this. But if you can go beyond, you are this small mind, even reading the list of the disciples is just incredible. There were some incredible people, just so incredible. Like, and then of course the contents of the teaching is like even more, what do you call it, mind boggling. Um, but, oh, you know, we are not doing the Avatamsaka Sutra, the whole thing, of course not. We, I'm just giving you some sort of, um, trying to sort of um, make you have some sort of appetite or um, curiosity towards um, Gandhavyuha Sutra. Um, Yeah. Um, oh yes, this is another thing I should um, express. You know, how we see and experience things Right now, I'm looking at this screen and I'm not seeing any one of you here. And I have my experience of this room. I have my experience of, I don't know, few people sitting in front of me right now. Um, and I imagine Many of you are right now looking at this screen. And I can only imagine you are looking at a screen and you are seeing me, right? And that's 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 about all I have. You know, like I I, I can just I can just imagine you must look at me and see this in that way. You know, sort of I can, you know, within the human context, I can fairly I, I'm, it's safe to say that you, you all uh, <clears throat> see a bold man yelling at the, uh, what is it, screen. That's about, you know, you know within, <laughs> within the, uh, as a human being, we can, yeah, we can have some sort of agreement, I guess. But let's say if there's a cat here or a dog here, I don't, we don't know how they see, how they, we, they look at us. You know, I'm just giving you this as an example. Now imagine Buddha, enlightened being, how they see the world. You know, like our eyes, this eyes that we have, our eyes have capacity to only see, even that with a lot of, you know, far sight, short sighted, what, all that kind of cataract and all that kind of problem. Our eyes can see just this much. Buddha's eyes can not only see, Buddha's eye can hear, Buddha's eye, eyes can taste, Buddha's eyes can feel, Buddha's eyes can comprehend. So now try to sort of imagine how this is the Buddha's view. And the bodhisattvas, there, there were lots of Buddhas and bodhisattvas. This is their view of how the world is functioning. Um, <clears throat> now, um, and actually our hero of this sutra is uh, 
this um, body, but uh, wait, um, Sudan, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting mixed up now. Norbu Zangbo, we call him Sudana. Even the Sudana is quite interesting. Many times we refer him as the merchant. I will get back to you. But interestingly, in Chinese paintings and I don't know, this chubby boy also, sometimes. But this is something that you need to know. Gandhavyuha Sutra really has descriptions of wealth. Because here we are talking about um, basically a businessman called Sudana. Very, very rich. I'm sure when we talk about rich, many of you think in terms of Elon Musk or Bill Gates. If you read the description of the richness of Sudana and many other merchants here, today's rich, today's rich people, it's a joke. It's a joke. Incredibly wealthy people. And the descriptions, I mean, if you, you know, if you flip through, if you have time, um, it's there, but anyway, the, the Gandhavyuha Sutra is um, sort of an account of this um, this young bodhisattva, but uh, pilgrim. Basically, it's it's a it's a Sudana's pilgrim. It's it's his sort of uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's his travel, basically, and. Um, It is his um, journey to uh, journey encountering more than 50 uh, gurus, masters, bodhisattvas. Um, and um, each one of them is just, um, I don't know, it's just, um, as I, I don't know, from the lack of word, I would say mind boggling. And just, um, I don't know, just to, just to, just a small note here. It was actually his journey was, journey was triggered, triggered by Manjushri. And he, <clears throat> Manjushri made him basically have this curiosity. He, he says, okay, I, I don't know, what is it about the South? But anyway, he's go to this South and go and find this master. If you want to know the incredible infinite Bodhisattva path, go to the South, find this master. And then he goes to this, this um, place, and then he will find this master. And this master in turn will say, okay, you know, there were a lot of teachings. And, and then this master will then again encourage, okay, now go furthermore. And then uh, there's this master that you have to learn from him or her. And uh, <clears throat> um, I was thinking, because it's, in, it's just not possible to, what do you call it, go through each, every one of them. I'm, I'm just choosing maybe one, one of the teacher, okay? He, and, and many of them are 
okay, um, woman, one of them is even a prostitute whom he even have a intimate relationship. This is his guru. And I'm just want to say this for uh, if there's especially if there's um, Chinese Mahayana people listening to this. Um, this is a, not a tantric text. This is not a Vajrayana text. Yet this is a purely Mahayana text. In fact, I would say Avatamsaka Sutra is probably one of the very favored and venerated and popular Mahayana texts within the Chinese society. So if people can pay some attention that our great hero had teachers, not just monks and men, but women, many of them. And one of them even happened to be a courtesan, prostitute, basically. And these things are really part of the infinite I was talking about. But let me choose this one first. I mean, the, this one. I think this is the 15th guru. I think so, number 15. Uh, I'm not so good with these um, sort of, I didn't do a proper, what do you call it, <clears throat> academic um, arrangement. So I think it's the number 15. Anyway, um, so I think the after um, I think the number 14th is a monk who is known as what we call Tanadupa, meaning the um, Tanadupa is like a, a very beautiful one, a monk whose name is a beautiful one. With this monk, he learned a lot. He received so many teachings. And the monk then finally said, you know, you now need to go and go to this place and um, learn from this master. Um, the master's name is, um, um, Wang Pu Wang Chuk, sort of the, I don't know how to translate it. I'm sure you can refer to, now that you have the app, you can refer to, because I'm not a translator, okay? Um, sort of the Lord, I don't know, Lord of Lord, a boy, okay? So go and go, go, go to him. Ask him again and again, how a bodhisattva should behave, how, a bodhisattva should be diligent. How a bodhisattva should increase their courage. How a bodhisattva should be uh, unbeatable, you know, um, courageous, I guess. And how a bodhisattva should have a strong aspiration. So on and so forth. He said, you should go, go and find this, this bodhisattva. And then with tears in his eyes, Sudana, the disciple. And by the way, he has also the entourage because he's a very, you know, he's a very, very rich man. Tears in his eyes, bidding farewell to his 14th guru. I think it's the 14th, please check. Um, you know, after many years, he studied this. And even this is really, again, you should really listen in the context of infinite. Because the trip almost is all like taking like a hundred years, probably, you know, like a hundred to 200 years. You know, if you think in our ordinary, this limited way of thinking, 
So anyway, Sudana goes. Bet farewell to the 14th Guru. And then he went everywhere in search for this 15th Guru. And finally, at the confluence of the river, he sees this little boy with 10,000 playmates <laughs> playing in the sand, in the beach. It's just, I mean, what an image, you know. Be in the, they're, they're playing, they're, like, they're having fun there. And the great Sudana goes to the boy. From the distance, he sees the boy Bodhisattva playing with 10,000 other boys, very much moved by the boy, goes to the boy, touch boy's feet, offer his veneration, homage, prostrations, circumambulate the little boy hundred times, thousand times, imagine how many, you know, again, don't think in terms of our, you know, like our time and our measurement. After lots and lots of circumambulation, he sits in front of the boy and begged for teaching. I have taken the Bodhisattva vow. I'm, by the way, I'm making it very short and just, just to give you some idea. How should now, how should I apply the Bodhisattva path? How should I really make myself diligent? I have heard you are incredible, enlightened fame from the far and wide. And I came here in search for you, for your advice. I ask this with a wholehearted, with a whole, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, utmost seriousness, please give me, you know, show me the way, show me the path. And then the boy in reply said, you know, I studied under Manjushiri. I studied, Manjushiri taught me how to write, how to count, how, you know, like um, grammars, language, and, and uh, numerology. Yeah, this is, this is about numerology, by the way. And also I have learned the art of creating crafts. And the Manjushiri is the one who made me have the quality of omniscience. And because of Manjushiri, I actually know the letters that exist in the whole wide universe. I know all the names that exist in the universe, not just earth and the numerology mathematics, symbolism, and how to articulate when you need to articulate these things. I know everything, how to articulate things. This is a little boy, probably about eight years old, talking to the great merchant who has already graduated learning from some of the great monks and scholars, about 14 of them already. Now he's with this boy. And I have learned, you know, art. And I have learned about the elements, you know, like consti uh, consti uh, what do you call it? Um, constitution of beings. I have learned how to heal <clears throat> people from uh, ailment that is caused by poisons of all kinds. 
I know how to quench the thirst of all different kinds of thirst. And I have also, I also know how to cure the forgetfulness and um, possession of, uh, you know, like demons and, you know, uh, I don't know, dark force. I know the size and the with, you know, like the size and the quantities and the qualities of all kinds of cities, villages, markets, restaurants. I know different kinds of forest, parks, gardens. I know how shapes of the house. I know the size of the design of the house. I know that, you know, like where the windows are and how the windows are built. This is the little boy talking. And how the, how the, the you know, the elevation of the houses. And I also know the, the sort of the engine engineering or the sort of how uh, the actual uh, kind of um, system operates. And I know how to also assemble or how to run chariots. Anyway, it's a very long list of these. I also, I, I also know the science of science and the truth of virtue and non-virtues. I know what makes sentient beings suffer. I also know what makes a Sharvaka or Pratyaka Buddha, what makes them achieve their Arhat state. And not only I know them, I actually make many, many people go and enter into the Arhat state and the Bodhisattva stage all the time, I'm helping them. I make people go beyond references. I make, I purify people's defilements. I clean their stain. I really clean them completely. I make them luminous. I make them very open. But especially, I know the Bodhisattva's way of counting numerology. And this is the part that I chose to talk a little bit more here, because there's, it, 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 there's a so many. So here, okay, so as a human being, you and I, what do we have? We have from zero, one, two, three hundred, what, thousand, ten thousand, or one hundred thousand, so on, and so one million, and then what? Then how many? We have billion, then trillion, and then what do we have? After a while, we, we run out. But the boy's numerology doesn't run out. He has the just ongoing, you know, term for this. So this is something that I cannot translate. I will just read it as a just auspiciousness for those who are listening. So I'm going to just, okay, so this is, this is, num, this is the, what do you call it? Number, okay, like a trillion, how would you call it? After trillion is what? Zillion zillions and zillions, you know, that's all we could say, right? As a human being, that's, this is all we can manage, but not this boy. It begins with starting from 100, and 
to ke 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 na ta go ta go ta go na tik tik go tik 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 na tam tam so tam 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 na nyang ni to nyang ni ne ni na kang yao kang ya kang ya na ben bin no ben bin ben bin na char chur char chur char chur na jak jik go jak jik jak jik na jang jing jang jing jang jing na chem 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 na char chol lo char chol char chol na chu chu do chu 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 na sar 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 na tip 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 na ya kang so ya kang sa ya kang na choma 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 na tam tim tam tim tam tim na nap nubo nap nup nap nup na sang 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 ju yeso ju ye ju ye na tang yeso tang ye tang ye na tra yero tra yero tra ye na sa yeso sa ye sa ye na tsung me to tsung me tsung me na lam lum lam lum lam lum na yal yolo yal yolo yal yol na tal tulo tal tul tal tul na tu tu do tung 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 na sam che do sam che sam che na dang dang o dang 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 na de yeso de ye de ye na ho yeso ho ye ho ye na sang ya go sang ya sang ya na to wa je o to je to je na ze cho ze cho ze cho na yong ten o yong ten yong ten o du ge so du ye du ye na sang ya lo sang ya lo sang ya na tik yu go ting yu ting yu na yi cho yi cho yi cho na nap nebo nap nep nap nep na tik tak so tim tap tip tap na yal yal lo yal 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 na de yeso dang ye dang ye na tuk yal lo tuk yal tuk yal na shang shang o shang 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 na yak yago yak 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 na tam tim o tam tim tam tim na lop nyal lo lop nyal lop nyal na jal che so jal che na jal che na jal yalo shal ye shal ye na shal medo shal me shal me na shal khodo shal ye shal khona shal tim shal tim shal tim na kar shal yalo kar shal kar shal na shal sang so shal sang shal sang na shal ta go shal ta shal ta na shal pul shal pul na shal pul na shal si shal si shal si na cho churo cho jun na cho jun na nyar nyero nyar 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 na cha chi go chak chik chak chik na sal sul sal sul sal sul na sal sal lo sal 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 na yo de go yo de go yo de na pen pen no pen 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 na nang yao nang ya nang ya na rem do lo rem do lo rem do na zi nghe do zi nghe zi du lo zi du lo zi du na pen yo lo pen yo lo pen yo na nghe nghe do nghe 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 na trang zi o trang zi trang zi na sap trang o sap trang sap trang na ga chang o ga chang ga chang na jung ta lo jung ta jung na thu cha do thu cha na thu cha na wol cha do wol cha wol cha na dab ye so da ye dab ye na chal ye so chal ye chal ye na trang ye so trang ye trang ye na chim cho lo chim cho chim cho na ya me o ya me ya me na nyal so nyal ye na nyal ye nyal ye na dab de bo dab de dab de na pen chết được pen chết pen chết là thằng phăng phung phăng phung phăng phung là kêu chẳng một kêu chẳng kêu chẳng rung 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 là chó giả lo chó giả lo chó giả là thà tu lo thà tu lo thà tu là yun chẳng số yun chẳng yun chẳng là bún lo bún bún lo bún lo là lâm lo mà lâm 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 là nhẹ nhẹ số nhẹ 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 là lăng linh ở lăng linh lăng linh là chấp chấp số chấp 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 là như chân là như chân như chân là chấm nhẹ số chấm nhẹ là ngã Dang so ngan dang na ngan dang na he yalo he yal he yana ta chul ta chul na ta chul na lo je so lo je lo je na bubdi mo bubdi bubdi na kangum 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 na la yo la la lo la lo na dang che so dang che dang che na dong che la de o de ba o dang che la de ba dang che la de na ba yu so ba yu ba yu na ba yu la de ba o ba yu la de ba ba yu la de na yal che la yal yu yal che na yal che la de ba o Yal chula deba yal chula dena muyal to muyal muyal na muyal na deba muyal na deba muyal na deba na tang yul tang yul tang yul na tang yul na deba tang yul na deba tang yul na dena ni jal to ni jal na min jal na deba min jal na deba ni jal na dena sam chul to sam chul sam chul na sam chul na deba sam chul na deba sam chul na dena thajam 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 pa go pak ta pak na 
Pactala debo, Pactala debo, Pactala de Jedemeba, 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 Jedemeba debo, Jedemeba deba, Jedemeba de Jedemeba and Jedemeba deba, Shin the Temba, the Aid in the Chemipo, Pastor Pax said to me, said on Temba, do the world, did a Chemi to Dinich, Yodo, Shaja and the Chemi to Jedemeba and Jedemeba deba, Dinich, Yodo, Shara de Chen, Trunk City, Trunk of Jedo, D. Chemipo with the Tij, Dart and Bishin to Den. The Jangle Chanjusambanam,当时去的church,那明天的church,就不去,你也不当,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,就是当时,
he's going around all the time. He's like a traveler, like a, you know, like a globe, globe trotter in this. And uh, Sudana encounters him because the earlier Bodhisattva has recommended. But anyway, again, it comes completely going around and he coming back to the Manjushri, of course, the Manjushri, one of the later guru, and then the last one is the Samandabhadra, who is like, a, you know, like in China, there's a place called Omishan and um, riding an elephant. And uh, last of the last um, portion of, of this sutra is the um, Samadabhadra's prayer uh, that we recite. Well, that's actually really like, consider me holding a hair and dipping it in the ocean and sprinkling this towards ourselves and say, this is a drop of, this is an ocean. I mean, you know, I can claim that, but it's not the whole ocean. So just to make you really understand and appreciate. And this is not just a fairy tales. It's really working with, it's really deconstru deconstructing our idea of, of size, our idea of numbers, our ideas of shapes and time, time. And of course, as usual, there's also some other classic bodhisattva courageous action when um, Sudana went to one of the masters, the master said, you know, jump into this fire. And then Sudana thought, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, maybe this man is not really, you know, you know, maybe he's a charlatan, maybe he's not really a master, you know, you know I have a precious human body. How can I damage myself? How can I benefit sentient beings? If I jump into the fire and, you know, die, then that, that will be the end. And at that very moment, the gods and the, you know, the, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, you know, one after another told Sudana, no, this Bodhisattva is like the supreme, you know, teacher that practiced the patience. And uh, anyway, there's that encountering. So I hope that um, this has at least give you aroused some sort of interest. Um, I mean, forget about covering the sutra. I mean, not the, of course, not the Abhatamska sutra, not even the Gandhav Yuha sutra, but actually I did not even manage to finish my note beyond two pages. I actually wanted to, you know, share a few things, but it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's like infinite. But um, um, I hope um, at least it made some, I don't know, some sort of sense for some of you. <laughs>